It's time to finally introduce eigenvectors and eigenspaces. So what is an eigenvector? Well, an eigenvector of an n by n matrix, A, is a vector x such that A times x is equal to lambda times x. Well, what is lambda? Well, lambda is just some scalar, and we also require that x is not equal to the zero vector. So let's draw on this graph here what it does. So A times x is equal to lambda times x. Well, this means that it just extends it further, so it may multiply it to make it bigger, or it may multiply it to make it smaller. So a times x is going to take x and map it somewhere along this line. So it's going to extend it further, contract it, make it negative. We'll do one of those things. And we say that lambda is an eigenvalue if ax equals lambda x has a non-trivial solution. So this means that there is no linear independence there. So it's going to have a free variable somewhere in the row reduced matrix of A. Okay, so a little bit theoretical. Let's show you with a concrete example how this works. So here I have a vector x, 1, 3, and a matrix A, and I want to find the eigenvalue of A. Okay, so what is the eigenvalue? Well, that is ax is equal to lambda x. So we want to find this lambda. So what we'll do is we'll take a, which is 1, 6, negative 1, negative 4, and we'll multiply by x, which is 1, 3. And if there is an eigenvalue, then our result is going to be the vector x multiplied by some number. Okay, so if we multiply these out, this is going to be the vector 1, 6 added to the vector negative 3, negative 12, which gives us the vector negative 2, negative 6. Okay, so if we factor out a negative 2 here, this is going to be negative 2 times the vector 1, 3, which is exactly what our x is here. So our ax is equal to negative 2 times x. So we can say that negative 2 is an eigenvalue of the matrix A. Now, of course, if I give a different vector x, there may be different eigenvalues. So there's not necessarily just one eigenvalue of a matrix. And given a vector, you can't necessarily find all the eigenvalues of a matrix. So it's important to keep that in mind. So for instance, I could give you a matrix A and I could say, okay, show that two is going to be an eigenvalue of A. I could say, well, show that any number is an eigenvalue of A. It may not be an eigenvalue, but I can sure ask you to try to show it. Okay, so again, let's write the definition here. We have AX is equal to lambda X. But we want to show that 2 is the eigenvalue. So we're saying, okay, ax is equal to 2x. And this has to have a non-trivial solution. Okay, so how do we change this equation to something that we can work with? Well, let's bring the 2x over to the left side here. So this is like saying a times x minus 2 times x is equal to the zero vector. Okay, now let's factor out this x here. So we're going to have the x on the right, and it's going to be a minus 2 times the identity vector times x is equal to the 0 vector. So this has to have a non-trivial solution, which means if we take this matrix here and we row reduce it, we should find that there's one column that's not a pivot column. So if that's the case, then 2 is going to be an eigenvalue. Okay, so how, how do we do this? How do we compute this? Well, we're going to take our matrix A, 3, 2, 3, 8, and we're going to subtract 2 times the identity matrix. So that's going to be 2, 0, 0, 2. So again, that's just 2 times the identity matrix, which is 1, 0, 0, 1. And this is going to be equal to the matrix 1, 2, 3, 6. Oh, okay. So we see something nice here we see that the second column is just two times the first column. And the second row is just three times the first row. So we know here that we're going to have a column that's not a pivot column. So we have, say, one, two, zero, zero. 
which means that there is a free variable here. Okay, so because there's a free variable, that means that a minus 2i times x equals 0 has a non-trivial solution, which means that 2 is going to be an eigenvalue of a. So we can take this further. We can find all the eigenvectors of a that correspond to eigenvalue 2. So let's see here. Well, this says here that x1 is going to be equal to negative 2x2, which means that we can take our vector x and we can solve for x here. So of course this is going to be uh, the vector x1, x2, which is equal to negative 2x2 times x2, and we can factor out the x2. It's going to be x2 times the vector negative 2, 1. So this is the set of solutions, or the set of non-trivial solutions, for a minus 2i x is equal to 0. So the eigenvector corresponding to eigenvalue 2 for the matrix A is going to be any vector of the form x2 times negative 2, 1, or x2 times the vector negative 2, 1. Okay, so that's a little bit of eigenvalue computation. So let's move into a theorem, which is very important for finding very quick eigenvalues. So the eigenvalues of a triangular matrix are the entries on the diagonal. So we saw something very similar to this with determinants. And in fact, in the next video, we're going to see an even crazier connection between determinants and eigenvalues. But for now, we're going to consider the 3 by 3 matrix. And I'm going to do this just to give a nice visual demonstration. Uh, you can easily do this with n by n matrices, just extend it further. So let's have our entry. So it says the eigenvalues of a triangular matrix. Okay, so we're going to do an upper triangular matrix here. Okay, so we're going to have a11, a12, a13. Uh, that's going to be 0. So these ones are going to be 0. a22, a23, and a33. So remember here, we're going to be looking for a minus lambda i times the vector x equal to 0. So this right here is what we're looking for. So we need to subtract lambda times the identity matrix. So if we subtract the identity matrix here times lambda, we're going to be subtracting something that looks like this. Okay, and then what's our result going to be? Well, let's scroll down a little bit here. So we're going to have a11 minus lambda, a12, a13, and we're going to have 0, a22 minus lambda, a23, and then 0, 0, a33 minus lambda. So here's our question. When does this equation here, or when does this matrix rather, have a non-trivial solution? Well, it has a non-trivial solution when there is a column that's not a pivot column. So when does that happen? Well, that happens when a33 minus lambda is equal to 0, or a22 minus lambda is equal to 0, or a11 minus lambda is equal to 0. So if any one of these are 0, then we're going to have a non-trivial solution, and either a11, a22, or a33 is going to be an eigenvalue, which means that the possible eigenvalues here are going to lie on the diagonal of a triangular matrix. This works the same if it's lower triangular, but I'm just showing a 3x3 three three upper triangular matrix uh, because it's pretty straightforward, but again, you can extend this to n by n, exactly the same result. Okay, so that's a pretty important theorem. So the eigenvalues of a triangular matrix are the entries on the diagonal. So just like our proof here, a11, a22, a33 are possible candidates. So if I give you a matrix like this, what are the eigenvalues of A? Well, it's in upper triangular form, so that's good, which means that our eigenvalues are going to be on the diagonal. They can be either 4, 3, or 0. So 0 is a possible eigenvalue. So that's going to be OK. What that means, though, is that the matrix A is not going to be invertible. So if 0 is an eigenvalue, then it's not invertible. And, and we can see why. So uh, 
if we have a matrix like this and we want to invert it, uh, we already know that we can't. So if there is a zero on the diagonal, then it is going to be not invertible. So we want to keep this in mind for proofs later. But anyways, that was the introduction to eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Uh, that's pretty much the basics. So if you have any questions, please leave your comments below and I'll answer them the best that I can.